Hey y'all, I am out here looking for army worms. I've been battling them all week. Oh, here's one. There's different kinds. There's some that hatch from just one egg. And then there's another variety that are quite frustrating. They lay many eggs on just one leaf. And when they hatch, they're very, very tiny, tiny, tiny little worms. Though there can be like a hundred of them on just one leaf. Oh, see, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now these little guys are very tiny. I don't even know if you can see them on the camera. But if you see damage like this, remove it. Because if you wait for these little guys to get bigger, you're gonna be in trouble. And it happens fast. These little guys here are interesting. When they're babies like this, I've observed that when you try to go and squish them, they can drop. I don't know if you see, they're very tiny this leaf here, they have little webs and they'll drop down and hang like that to try to get away from you. It's important to really go out there every day and check and because I see several. And I've recruited Nathan today. He's going to help me. Hi, I'm just staring around cluelessly at the garden. <laughs> so babe, this is what I'm looking for. You see how tiny they are? Holy crap. Yeah, and there's hundreds of them just on this one leaf. I see that. And this section here they're everywhere, either very, very tiny, you see this? So I'm gonna, in this situation, I'm gonna probably just remove the leaf and give it to the chickens. It's easier oh, than to try to squish them. These ones just hatched. And gosh, how tiny do you think these are, Nathan? Just they're a tenth of an inch long. So like a tenth of an inch, very tiny, very tiny. I've honestly not seen these in their egg form yet. I haven't caught it, Wait, but here, I don't know if you can even see it, but this is a tiny, this is an egg. This is an army worm egg, they're gray. I've tried neem oil on these guys. It doesn't do diddly squat. Neem oil, um, you're spraying oil on your plants. That can't be healthy. Your plant needs to breathe. Last year I was, I was very religious about spraying the neem oil. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> and it didn't do anything and it made my plants more sick. I think we caused more problems than we stopped. Yeah. And so with the neem oil, we just quit doing it. It wasn't working for us. <sighs> I'd be curious, has anyone had success with neem oil? Because I'd be curious. Bottom line is they are everywhere and I wonder about a, even just water. I'm That's what I was thinking. I was like, let's get the hose out, see if we can spray these suckers down, see if that would work. Let's see, I'm gonna get the hose. Okay. We'll try it. Cause I had that thought like yesterday and I was like, maybe we can just try it out. Yeah, always pay attention to those little thoughts. I just knocked a worm off. I did see that one fly. That that one went too. Well, let's let's find a leaf where we know that there's a bunch of them. Okay, right here, right here. See this? Little ones. Yeah, very tiny. So spray this leaf, and then we'll check it and see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> so is your tomato. So is my tomato. He needs to be tied up. See, I haven't wet weaved. That one needs to be I woven through, yeah. I this one through correctly, but now it's too tall, although maybe. I think you can get it. I think you can get it. It's thin enough. Well, here I'm snapping. Here I'm just snapping. Ah. Oh, okay. The water works. The water works. <laughs> it works swell. Okay, that's what we're gonna do then. We're gonna spray them off with water. We'll make this job easier here. See y'all, I had this idea yesterday. And it works. It works, y'all. You gotta pay attention Use to your, your intuition. Use your brain. And I've heard some people at night will go with a black light and the glow worms, the glow worms, <laughs> the horn worms will glow and their eggs will glow. I've never tried that though. Hey, pause for a second. I want to show you something creepy and interesting. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I scared away that yeah, little cardinal. Little Look at this. Uh, yeah, it's mold. What happened there is that, that that female flower didn't get pollinated enough so by it, a male flower. I see. So, so then so. It, it, it dies and it, it rots. And those, I generally just cut them off with some scissors. So that's not a disease that's going to spread all over. Oh, no. That's just, that's. 
the that's plant. Just, that's a, just a moldy, moldy unfertilized fruit. fruit. And you, you know what, y'all? I've been having such a hard time pollinating these. So I've been covering the flowers because I want to pollinate them myself. I I don't want any cross pollination. I want this particular fruit. Look at this thing, though. Isn't this huge? Okay. When I first got this, it wasn't doing the, anything, and then all of a sudden, boom! It's it's. Did you show them this over here? Uh, not yet. Look at all those. It's Whoa. doing the best. As you see, it's very prolific. But I've been having the hardest time finding the perfect moment when the female flowers are open. It's just, I haven't seen one female flower open. I have had success with pollinating it just by gently, gently opening the flower. Gently, gently? Is that? Gently. 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 <laughs> by gently opening the flower and I'm able to pollinate it with the male flower, I just take the male flower off. And if you break it down, you just tear it. So that's your little pollinating wand. Yeah, now. this is your. This is the male, and this is what I use to pollinate the female. See, so I'll show you. I find it just easier to use the male flower. This is pretty crazy. Look at this. Ooh, it's like a secret tunnel. This one. See, I marked it here. I pollinated this one with a male flower from this plant that I had covered. It's growing. It's doing well. See, this is the female flower. They're swollen here at the base. This is the fruit starting to grow. And if it's not properly pollinated, it will just start rotting as you saw over there. So I'm gonna try to, when this one gets large enough, still haven't seen the, the open flower yet, but I'm gonna just keep trying and, and gently, I had success with this one over here by just gently, gent, why can't I say that word? <laughs> anyway, y'all get the point, I think, I hope. I was able to open the flower and pollinate it without it being open on itself. Anyway, what were we doing? We were spraying worms. Check this out though, I've got a pumpkin growing over here. Right here, isn't that neat? That's cool. I'm excited. What kind of pumpkin is that? This is just a like a jack-o'-lantern, just for the girls to carve for mm -hmm. fun. See all these beans though, they're not really producing a lot because they're just putting all their energy in growing. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, but I, I still love it, it's fun. I see beans here and I there. I see some here and there. I just, I just like these, little playhouses that you're making all over the place. This is just, it's fun to go into... This is my other secret fort. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's fun to go into a, a space that you've created and grown yeah, and not just neat. built. It's alive, it's a living thing. I like it. I noticed a squash tunnel. The walls look more sparse than they do. Yeah, so what's going on here in the middle, the, the leaves aren't getting as much sun. So I've had to, some of them start to yellow. Okay, so you've been, I've been pruning them. I've been taking them off because they just start getting sick and I just prefer to not But it's that. like, it's really thick up there. It's because it's getting sunshine up there. This section is not getting sunshine, it's getting blocked out. But it's still growing great on the sides and up top. You know, this is nice too because it, it sprays off all the worm droppings on your plant. It's kind of nasty, nasty, you know? Oh, that's true. Oh, look at that big boy. We'll give that one to the chickens, they'll like that. <laughs> Here. She was bullying that little baby hen. Yeah, they, I've noticed that the now older she, ones are doing that a little now bit. Now she's got a worm, so she's in defensive mode instead. Yep. Clouds are coming in. We better get the chicken stuff done. You mean the clouds are going and away? The clouds are going away. Yes. <laughs> the sun's I think, coming in. I think that worked well. Try it out. See if it works for you. If you're if you don't spray poison on your plants, it's definitely a lot easier than hand picking them off. That's for sure. You do this for aphids, right? Yeah, it works for aphids too to just spray them off. Don't don't just take my word for it. Dun dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. See if it works for you. Cause y'all, I'm not an expert. I'm just, I'm just a gardener out here experimenting. Check out this row. Remember when we planted this with the tobacco and peanuts here? It looks like I need to tie up the pepper. It's doing good though. That's a peanut plant? Yeah, that's a peanut. I like it. Yeah. So what I need to do is clean this coop out. I do it every, about every two weeks. I get about 
average about two wheelbarrows full, and then I dump that straight onto my garden out here. But mm -hmm. first, I gotta kick all these little chickens out because they're gonna wanna just run out the door. Now that they're out of there, I can clean it out. Ooh, it startled me. Thought I was stepping on something squeaky. What I do now is just put it straight down onto the garden. And I've been doing this for a couple years now and it's been working really well for me. It breaks down on its own. I've got lots of bugs down here that like to eat this kind of stuff and break things down into organic matter. So it works out great. Let's do that. It also buries any weeds that I want to have buried. And then those weeds will die back and put more nutrients into the soil. That worked out good, guys. Looks like we got, we able to do most of the row all the way down. I'll finish the little section on the end next time when I clean, clean out the coop. And then I'll just keep going doing that all throughout the garden on my rows. It is the next day, y'all, and I have something that I wanted to show you that I got in the mail. This is a five pound bag of buckwheat. And I love buckwheat. I use it not as a cover crop, I use it as a companion plant really for my, in my garden. I think it's lovely. And it's the only plant that I know of that will put phosphorus into your soil. But you see, any little white flower that you see on these rows, that's buckwheat. By six weeks, it's already producing flowers and it attracts pollinators and again puts phosphorus in the soil. And I just, I just think it's a pretty little extra thing to add in my garden. For me, my garden is art and art happens in layers, right? And I like to put several different layers down. And when I put it down, I just put it down on top of my mulch and it grows. In fact, Nate got me some marigold seeds last year. I have thick mulch and I just threw the marigold seeds out there and they grew. So you don't have to, what do you do when you mess with the soil? What's cultivate. Cultivate, you don't have to cultivate it. It grows, it just grows. So we're gonna put that out today. This looks barren, y'all. This just looks barren down here, don't you think? It needs some color. So we're gonna put a little bit of color down here. <laughs> I feel like I'm sounding a little bit like Bob Ross. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna put some color down over here because it's boring. You don't want them so, look. Look at these seeds, by the way. They're kind of fun looking. They look like chocolate chips. Yeah, aren't they funny? I want to eat them. So yeah, I just throw them down and we're still expecting more rain. And then it won't look so barren over here. wild strawberry isn't it so pretty i just think it's a lovely natural ground cover and it stays low to the ground like this i'm just letting it go up on the mounds i don't mind Whew, just put my face right in the spider web jen it looks like you got those japanese beetles whipped pretty much i i maybe i think i saw one today and that's it right now i'm just picking them up it's crazy ones. because they came on so fast and it looked like such an overwhelming problem. Yeah. But the Japanese beetle has one weakness that you exploited. You would knock them into a bucket, mm -hmm. a few at a time, and then the rest would scatter to the wind. And then what happens? Well, they come back. <laughs> and you just gotta keep picking them off and then you will eventually get them all. Oh my gosh, Jenna. 
I'm melting like an ice cream yeah, cone. That's the shade. Oh, shit, we'll <laughs> All right. It's so it's very humid today. That's what it is. It's the humidity. Yeah, it's only it it's 80 something. But it, yeah, when it's humid like this, it just makes you want to sweat like crazy. But, but you were saying these Japanese beetles seem like a crazy problem, but they have a weakness that you can exploit. They yeah. they create this pheromone it's zone. It's sex pheromones. They're mating, so. And they always come back. Yeah. Same thing with the army worms. It looked like a daunting, overwhelming yeah. problem. And it, so first, you know, I was dealing with the squash beetles, if you all remember. Then the Japanese beetles came, and now it's the army worm. So it sometimes feels very tedious, but all in all, you're just checking on your garden every day, and you're going to be picking off pests. Well, it feels overwhelming, yeah, right? It does. You go. You... I have days where I don't want to come out my garden because I feel overwhelmed because they're. Sometimes it feels like there's there's so many pests out there trying to trying to eat my garden. It's true. It, it'll make you feel like a terrible gardener. Pay attention to your intuition. Do a little research if you gotta. Yeah, I, it's just baby steps. Baby steps. What's that movie? What about Bob? That book? <laughs> baby baby steps, steps down the stairs. <laughs> the problems are oftentimes they're not that bad. Off all the army worms. Yeah, and I found a few today, and, and I'm gonna still find a few here and there, and eventually. I won't find them so much anymore. And maybe, I don't know, what's gonna come next? What, what's gonna be the next bug? <laughs> Have any ideas? Locusts. <laughs> oh. Y'all, we've had a Bigfoot sighting, not even a mile from our house, which I totally got a kick out of. This dude was driving by in his truck and he looks on the side of the road and sure enough, he says he saw this seven foot tall hairy man reddish brownish fur and when he was walking you know he walked he looked back you know like how bigfoot seems to always like to do that <laughs> anyway i just thought that was too funny so now i'm all paranoid i worry there might there might be a bigfoot out in the woods you know spying on me while i'm gardening i don't know you never know <laughs> all right let's put I, i'm gonna put a little bit of buckwheat around these beans here why not Add a little bit of color over here too. All right, y'all. I think that's gonna be all for today. Hopefully this buckwheat comes up soon and I can enjoy the blossoms. We'll see y'all next time, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Is that right? Did I say that right? What did I say? We'll see y'all next time, y'all. <laughs> We'll see y'all next time now. <laughs>